The China chapter of Parents, Families and Friends of Lesbians and Gays met in Shanghai last weekend, with the forum focusing on promoting communication, understanding and tolerance towards homosexuals in China. BON reporter Jessica Pan takes a look at what it's like to be gay in China in today's special report. Fourteen years ago, it was illegal in China. A decade ago, it was classified as a mental illness. Homosexuality is gradually becoming more accepted in Chinese society, but family tradition, a lack of discrimination laws in China, and lack of a prominent gay community still means that gays in China often hide their sexuality from their families and from the public. It is estimated that there are 30 to 40 million gay people living in China, but those living openly gay lives is a number that is far less. For those who live in Beijing, they can go to the LGBT center behind me to meet other gay people. But for people in rural areas, they're not as lucky. Zhou Guanghui, or Gary, knows firsthand what it's like growing up gay in a rural area. He was born in the far west province of Xinjiang and spent most of his adult life in Hunan province. Up until eight years ago, he had never met another openly gay person or told anyone that he was gay. Homosexual was not in my vocabulary. And uh, when I was in high school, I read books about uh, sexual orientation and I knew I was gay. But I didn't tell anyone, including my parents, because people will think that you are abnormal if you're gay. I have to hide it. A strong family tradition in China is the biggest difficulty facing gays who want to come out to their families. Chinese young adults are expected to be married by the time they reach their mid-twenties, and there is a strong pressure for them to have children. After I graduated from college, my parents constantly nagging, <laughs> and they forced me into marriage, but I refused. So from seven or eight years old until like 30 years old, I was upset. I couldn't accept myself. I was depressed. I have struggled about my sexuality. I couldn't find the means to solve the problem. He sought out information about being gay on the internet and found out about the LGBT, or Lesbian, Gay, Bisexual and Transgender Center. That's when he decided to move to Beijing. Actually, the main reason for me to leave my hometown and come to Beijing is uh, I, want, I wanted to escape from the old environment. In Beijing, it's a big city. Nobody, almost nobody cares their own business. It's no big deal if you're gay in Beijing. It's such a big city. This is the main reason. Gary made contact with the gay community for the first time at the LGBT center. In Beijing, he met his first boyfriends and he finally accepted his sexual orientation. But even now, he's too afraid to come out to his family. I'm afraid to tell them because I fear if I told them they would not accept me, maybe they will disown me. I was, I'm afraid. I'm afraid, actually. Gary's co-workers and flatmates also do not know he is gay. I told people that I was married. I tell my colleagues I'm married, so they don't bother me. And uh, I constantly told my parents that I was in a relationship, so they didn't set up me with a girl, and uh, yeah, I did that, but now I don't do that. It's meaningless. With no laws against discrimination in China, there is always the possibility he could lose his job if his boss finds out. Like Gary, Fan Popo mm, knew at a young age know. that he was gay, but he didn't know any other gay people. He was raised in the countryside of eastern Jiangsu province. So I didn't tell anybody else uh, until when I was in high school. Um, and there were a lot of uh, discrimination from other uh, people. Like uh, I told some of my classmates and um, one of the, my classmates, he know uh, my sexual orientation and he um, always uh, make, made a joke of me. He discovered an antiquated view of curing homosexuality in a library book about dating. There is a small part of the, in the book uh, um, talked about uh, homosexual, and, uh, but they told me how to change my sexual orientation. Um, 
like they will uh, tell you just uh, look at a, a, a beautiful lady's picture and uh, eat something you like and then uh, look at the next uh, man's picture and then um, make yourself painful. In China, the, uh, in older generation, they have a kind of a culture that uh, you should be the same with the others. You, you could not be different. Popo moved to Beijing in 2003 to study film. He's an activist in the gay community, and he's written books about gay films and made a documentary about people coming out. But for years, he was scared to tell his parents, who had been pressuring him to get married. But in 2009, he decided it was better to tell them sooner rather than later. They were really shocked uh, in the beginning. My mother cried very terribly, and my father also started to smoke. It took a few months, and although they have accepted his sexual orientation, they don't discuss it outside the family. And when Popo makes the Chinese annual pilgrimage home each spring festival in January, he tells friends and neighbors that he is too busy to have a girlfriend or that he's getting married next year. Uh, so they, um, they still want to keep it like a secret uh, for uh, our relatives and um, his friends. Coming out, or chu gui in Mandarin, is still a rarity among Chinese gays. But this inconspicuous high-rise in Beijing is a safe haven. The LGBT center on the 21st floor has a steady flow of activities for the gay community. But the tenants across the hall and security guards in the building are unaware of the center. During the 2008 Olympics, the center says police temporarily forced the center to close. But overall, the gay community feels free to use the center, as long as they are quiet. Most LGBT people in China wear invisible. Freedom for homosexuals in China ebbs and flows. There was the first unofficial gay marriage in Shenzhen this summer, but then Mr. Gay China was canceled. There's also the Shanghai Pride Festival, which has been running for the past two years. Ash is a veterinary student from Beijing. She lives an openly gay life in most aspects. Her family found out she was gay after she wrote online articles about her sexual orientation. And her friends know as well, but she still faces discrimination. When she tried to rent an apartment, the landlord found out she wanted to live with her girlfriend and decided not to rent to her. She's also wary of how her professors might react to her sexual orientation. I feel like if he knew, he wouldn't recommend me for a job after graduation. And he might not help me with my final project. He might treat me differently. I'm not sure what he would do if he knew. It's only a guess. I don't know how he would react. It seems the younger generation is more willing to accept gays. But Gary has only dared to show affection for a man in public once. Nobody said anything to me. I can read their looks, their facial expression on their face, like they had a thousand questions in their brain, but they said nothing. This is like, this is very typical in China. In China. It, it's none of my business. I just ignore it. This is very Chinese. Unlike people from older generations who may think homosexuality is something to be guilty about or think that they are the only gay person in the world, I had a lot of gay friends when I was growing up. But I feel they will also experience the same problems with coming out, just as the old generation has. I do feel it gets better, according to my experience, because I'm like, I'm, I'm like a veteran. <laughs> I've experienced a lot of things in, in, in China, in Beijing. So I, I want to tell people that it gets better and it will get even better in the future.